so it's a beautiful Sunday morning. We've got the ambience of the neighbor's mower next to us. We've got Henry occasionally crowing in the background, and it is time to do a video I've been wanting to do for a little while, just haven't gotten around to, and that is a par testing of the Mars Hydro TSL 2000. Now, a little while back, I did the unboxing of that Mars Hydro 300 watt light in there with the tent, but I didn't actually show the part testing with the Apigee par meter, and now it is time to make all that happen. I am excited to see the numbers. If you watch that Vipar Spectra testing, then you'll know that that was with a 200 watt light. This one is 300 watts in the tent that it was built for. So I'm excited to see exactly how much par we get with that. Now, if you're just coming to this channel and you're going, what is he talking about, par and light measurements? Well, I made a video about the light meter that I got that tests PAR. And I'll put a link in the description to that below, as well as other videos about these light testings I've been doing. Now, I know some of you don't care as much about the light testing, but it's important information, it's fun for me, and as we go forward, we're gonna be doing some growing of plants inside those grow tents with those lights and see exactly how well they perform. Now, that being said, the Mars Hydro Company has just recently come out with a new light a really cool light and I'm really excited about it I don't have it here yet but I would love to have it and if you're listening Mars Hydro send it out and we'll do some testing and growing with that one as well but it's called the I think SP 3000 anyway it's their new top of the line light it's 300 watts as well but it uses all the top of the line components the Samsung diode and the mean well driver I, I think this thing's gonna be absolutely fantastic but for right now we're testing the tsl 2000 let's get out there and make it happen all right so here we are in our little pump room and we've got everything set up got the mars hydro tsl 2000 set up inside this little grow tent remember that's a 300 watt light and then we've got our infrared thermometer and our par meter here and we've also got the watt meter so let's just start off like we have in the past by turning this sucker on and seeing just how bright it gets Dang, that never ceases to amaze me. These lights in these tents are just so outstanding. I love these LEDs once again because so low wattage for such bright, massive amounts of light. Isn't that cool? Let's look at this thing. Every time I turn it on, I'm just amazed. And at some point, we are going to grow something in here, guys. Don't worry, we're getting to that point. But let's start off by doing some part testing. All right, so let's get started here. We've got our little par set up there. I've got it hopefully angled so that you guys can see that and the light isn't glaring off of it. And then we've got a tape measure set up and that is just up under the diodes. They're just almost touching. So we've got just about the perfect distance here to you know for measuring. And then we'll go down at 12 inches, 24 inches, and 36 inches. And our goal here is to see just how good the light spread is on this Mars Hydro light. So I wanna see you know, how even it is across the tent and just how everything looks at different distances. Now, hopefully we can see those numbers there. I've tried to set this up as best as possible. I'm exactly one foot down now from the light here, and I'll show you. So I'm just holding it right at that one foot mark. So right at one foot and directly under the light, we are at 1,000, just over 1,000 par. So that's a really nice number. Hopefully that's picking that up for you guys. Just over a thousand par directly under the light at 12 inches. So let's see what happens as I move this out a little bit. You can see we're 966, 980s. We're still 12 inches under the light, right at the edge of the light. And we're 12 inches down and we're talking 800s, mid 800s. Nice range. And then if we go all the way to the edge of the tent there, it actually drops quite a bit 12 inches down at the edge of the tent. The light just uh, doesn't uh, go all the way out to the edge as well, but you still got plenty of growth. I mean, that's a great vegetative range out there. As we move in here, though, it really starts going up nicely. All right, now let's see what happens when we go to the back of the tent. So we're at 12 inches up, we're at 1,000 directly under the light. Let's go back. Now we're at 12 inches, all the way touching the back of the tent, and we are in the mid to high 600s. That's still, it's, like I said, a great range, better than the side there. Now let's move it back to the center, and we're going to go down to 24 inches here. 
Now we got that right about 24 inches and we're right at 600 directly under the light. 600, that's a great range for vegetative growth and we're starting to step into the flowering range. Now if we move all the way out to the edge, 24 inches down to the edge of the light, we are at, we're low 500, that's a good range there. And if we go all the way to the edge of the tent, 24 inches down, we're still mid 550, somewhere in that range, mid 500s. Actually, it's kind of going up a little bit. I think it depends on the reflectivity of the tent there. Or actually, how I'm turning this little meter too. When I turn it in, it reflects or it catches a lot more of the lighting there. Let's start moving it back in here. 24 inches down, directly under the light. We are at mid 600s. Let's go to this side, see what we got. 24 inches down all the way to the edge of the tent 600s wow i think it's just how that uh tent material is folded there and what about the back of the tent here 24 inches down we are talking right around 600 right around the same range so it's got a good light spread at 24 inches a very even just nice light spread and 600 is nice lighting for just about anything you would want to grow. Let's go to the very corner. This is the back corner at 24 inches. And we're looking at 450. So in the corner, it dips down a little bit. High, mid to high 400s. All right, let's try 36 inches here. So we're all the way down at 36 inches, three foot from the light. We're right in the middle of the light, directly under it, and we've got 400s, low 400s. Let's go to the back of the tent here. Back of the tent, high, uh, mid to high 400s, still doing real good there. And then what about out to the side of the tent here, right at three foot? We are at 450s. Perfect. How about the corner over here? Three foot down in the corner, we're talking four low 400s. It's not bad. So we can see, and I'll bet these numbers would go up a little bit with the tent actually closed, but we can see exactly what's going on here with this PAR meter. I love this PAR meter from Apogee, but we can see what's going on here. It, anything below two foot, two foot, three foot, you know, just going down, it's the numbers drop, the part drops, but we've got a very even light spread across the canopy in this two by four grow tent. So it's, you know, this light, if you're, if you're trying to grow fewer plants up high here, if you've got this light closer to the plants and you really need really high, high pars, you're probably just gonna grow a few plants directly under the light and you're gonna get everything you need out of this 300 watt light. If you're trying to veg vegetate a lot of plants, like if you're growing tomatoes or peppers and you're in the very beginning stages, you're trying to get lots of green growth out of them, you're gonna start down here in the two or four foot range and you're gonna get just a real broad, even canopy of light over you know your plants there. So nice little light, 300 watts. You can see the PAR numbers are, are right there, man. They're, they're really nice for this grow tent. Now, if you had this outside of a grow tent, it's not going to reflect on the side, so you're not going to get as even, you know, a par spectrum across the board at those same distances. So the, the tent really helps in reflecting that light and getting the most use out of the wattage there. Let's go ahead and take a look at this watt meter here. We'll see exactly what kind of wattage it's pulling. Now, it's a 300 watt light, so... There we go, 286, 287, that's where it's at, 286. So it's rated 300 watts, it's only pulling 286 watts right now. And it's been on for probably 10 minutes now. We should probably check the temperature. So that sucker gets hot after a little while, it's hot. I wouldn't want to leave my hand on that. It's pretty hot, how about the drivers? They're warm, but not near as hot. I can leave my hands on them. But this uh, heat shield here, that's hot. I wouldn't want to leave my hand on that. So you definitely probably want to take these wires and move them out of the way somewhere. And you might even want to move these ballasts here, or drivers here, out of the way completely as well. I know in that previous video I talked about just leaving them on there. They are cooler, and there is a gap here. 
and under here now if you had a fan blowing that was constantly keeping the the heat off of these guys then you might be okay but uh you might want to move them completely out of the way but let's go ahead and get that infrared thermometer and see what we've got all right so let's see what kind of temperatures this guy's pulling i'm going to hit it on the black since it doesn't reflect as well off the there it is 134 134 degrees that's getting up there but it's not too bad i mean you get lights a lot hotter than that let's go off of the driver here see if i can angle this right the driver is at 116 hopefully this is getting it 115 so that's not too bad that's like i said it's cooler this reflector may not reflect as well yeah it's the reflective material is not going to give an accurate reading. It says 84, but it's much hotter. But if I go off this white, yep, there you go, 142. Yeah, so I, that's a lot more believable. So this uh, this guy's pretty hot here, 140s, and that's after 10 minutes. Right here, once again, 130s on the side of the reflector. And 124 right there on the driver. So it heats up. Now, like I said, it's only been around for about 10 minutes, so it's probably going to heat up a little bit more. Uh, you know, it's putting out some heat, but it's 300 watts here. Now, that being said, this company just came out with a new light. Like I said, I think it's the SP3000. I don't have that one here yet, but uh, it is, it's built with better quality diodes, better uh, drivers, and I like the heat sink on it. The way it's built, I think it would dissipate more heat. It's also 300 watts, but the quality of the build of that light looks much better. So I'd be really interested to see what that one performs like with all these measurements, but this one sure is a beauty. And it does have a very nice, even par spread across the board down here. So pretty cool, man. So those are some pretty nice numbers, aren't they guys? A really nice, even spread on that par reading across the canopy at two foot and three foot. So you could grow just a range of beautiful plants in something like that. It does get a little bit hot and I wonder if their newer light has a little bit better heat dissipation so it doesn't get as hot. But if you got the right fans going in there, you got the right ventilation, then you're gonna be just fine. So if you're interested in this light, wanna learn more, I'll put links in the description below. If you click those links, I make nothing off of them. It's for your information only. Go check them out down below and you can see exactly what kind of measurements and readings they've got on their website for those lights. So I hope you enjoyed the information this one. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you wanna follow along and we'll see what happens with these lights. Have a fantastic week, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.